Okay, so I say what's happening is this. First of all, I want to say, take the yards out of Reb Melech, Rebbe Reb Melech. So they write here that it's other bays, but okay, yard site and a funny thing about other off and other bays. I don't know if it was in Ibiya when he passed away, but uh, he was a very, very big tzaddik. He was a Talmud of the Mizrach Magid. He was the Chavr of the Alter Rebbe, and the Veld Zokt, the Veld Zokt, that he said, the Rebbe Melech said, that if anybody comes to his cave and his mishtatech on his yard site, he'll do for them gedelos and tzuras. There's a big uh, industry in it to throw. The travel agents make a lot of money. That the uh, people go to 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 Ukraine for chafal vada for this day. I don't know if they do it the first order, the second order. The Friedrich Rebbe tells a long story about his father and his mother. Friedrich Rebbe writes that uh, his parents were pushed to people. They were not gedelos Yisrael. They pushed to push the yidden who were incredibly sincere, and they heard once from the Baal Shem Tev about how much the Ebishter appreciates the work of Pasha the Yidin. So he, he's a water carrier. He gave up the best route in town, the richest houses, to carry water for the shuls. And he made no money from that. So he gave up his panosa to have the schus of giving water to the shuls. Then he found on a Friday a fish in a well. Inside the fish was a diamond. And the Rav told him he could keep the diamond. And he he didn't trust at all. The Rav wasn't firm enough for him. He sold the diamond. They gave all the money to Tzedakah. And he was there to have two tzaddikim. The Melech and Ebzusha. They were brothers. The father's name was... Sounds like you, by the way. Right, of course. So far, sounds like me. Yeah? Eliezer Lipman. Eliezer Lipman. I didn't know I can fool you so good. Eliezer Lipe. Eliezer Lipman uh, was their father. And a lot of their children carried that name. In Chassidus, you have the name Eliezer Lipe. That name is the father of the Rebbe Melech and the Rebbe Ebzusha. Rebbe the Melech Melezhensk. The Friedrich Rebbe writes on the Kutat the Burim that when the Alter Rebbe came out with the Derech of Chabad, there was a lot of opposition, very strong opposition. But there were Talmidim who stood with him. Against Chabad? Against Alter Rebbe, yeah. yeah. There were Talmidim who stood with him. And the, uh, the Rebbe lists the names of every one of the Talmidim who stood with him. He doesn't write the names of the Talmidim who stood against him, <laughs> but he writes the, no, not necessarily. We don't even know the names of Talmidim Amagid. Um, but he writes the names of all the Talmidim who stood with him, and one of them was Rebelech, Rebbe Rebelech and Abzusha. Abzusha but was a very close friend of the Alter Rebbe. The Alter Rebbe said, I have two friends who I love till my nefesh, the Abzusha Hanepola and the Blade Koyen, the two who wrote the Haskam and the Sefer Tanya Kedisha. Rebelech passed away much earlier. The Tanya was printed in Tovkuf Nun Zayin, Tovkuf Nun Vav Nun Zayin, he passed away Tovkuf Mem Vav, 10 years before the Tanya was printed. So the story that's now modern about Rebbe Melech, I'll tell you two stories. One I heard from Rabbi Tversky, Rabbi Nachman Yosef Tversky, it's a Shrek Lecha Maise, that the, Rebbe, the Heliko Belzerev, the Holy Holy Belzerev, the Rabbi Rebbe Belzerev, was um, very afraid of Hitler. He became a Rebbe in 1927. Hitler came to power in 1933. As soon as Hitler, I think 33 or 32, anybody? As soon as Hitler came to power, the Belzereb identified him as Oysay Rusha, that bad man. As soon as he came to power, the Belzereb would say, Oysay Rusha lost Mechnish Davin, and Oysay Rusha lost Mechnish Lenin, Oysay Rusha lost Mechnish Machnatish. That bad man doesn't let me Davin, that man doesn't let me learn, that bad man doesn't let me And the Belzereb used to be normal, he used to have a schedule, you know. After that, he, had, he was in the middle of the night and the middle of the day. Even after the Mulchama, but he, he, he identified Hitler right away. In the 1939, the year of the war, he called on a chassid. He said, I want you to be in Lezhensk on your site, which is today, Chafalavad. Again, it's Chafalavad edition. In the calendar, they just locked there, right? Chafalavad Sheni. But I think it's because they, they consider the second or the more important, the Gabi I think we consider the first or the more important, the Gabi but I don't know for sure. Oh, to be by his cave, I want you to tell him this. Tell him, I want you to go to the belt to the, 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 the Melech and tell him these words. In the times of Purim, Haman Arasha went till the Kisya covered. And Esther Hamalka went higher than him and she pushed him down. He spoke in Yiddish, of course. Now there's Oysa Yerusha, that bad man. And, and I think he said also, he goes to the kids, like, there's no tzaddik alive today that can mm. throw him down. 
Favot Shlofter, why are you sleeping? That was the message. Favot Shlofter, why are you sleeping? No tzaddik alive today can take him down. Why are you sleeping? So he told this chassid, go to the tzien, be mishtateach, give this message, and come back and tell me exactly what happened. The today's yard says Rebbe Melech. This is called the Mils of the So he went to Lezhensk with the Shteich al Kivri and he, and he did exactly what he was told. And he came back to the Bells of Rebbe and he gave her the message exactly. And then he said to the Bells of Rebbe, if there's going to be a, if there's going to be a, a, a storm, what's going to be with me? And the Bells of Rebbe told Divas Kadaich the same Fadoig. You'll never see a German. This Jew with his wife and all of his children climbed into a bunker. That's how he told me the story. In 1939, and he climbed out in 1945. He never saw a Nazi. The Bells of Rebbe, Koyach. He climbed into a book in 1939. He never, he never saw a Nazi. But the story is what's, what's famous is that, I think this is even in the talks and tales, that the Nazis made the Hebrew Kaddisha exhume him. They went to the ma- Mak, the, the Melech. They made him dig him up. He was in the ground then, 160 years, Melech. He passed away in 1886. And this is 19... 19- 40. It's a hundred and how many years? 160 years. They exhumed him. He was completely whole. And he looked like a man who was asleep. And again, if the story is true, the Nazis, the Germans, ran out from Tirov. They were out of their minds. They became hysterical. But the modern story is that there was a modern Jew who didn't have any kids. Can I give you one? Your name is Aye. I'm working on it. In Hasidus, you have a, a name in Kabbalah, Ayoy, Metavov, Aleph Yud Vov. But Aye is Keser Choch Mabine, if you know the Kabbalah. He was a modern Jew who had no kids. And he had a Hasidish friend. And this Hasidish friend was a, a travel agent. So he says, this Hasidish friend says to him, listen, there's a custom by Hasidim to travel to the Tzin of Ramelech and the Jenska on your side, Chafala Vodir. And if you go, it's a school of all kinds of brachas. Why don't you go to the Ramelech Tzin? You have no children. Maybe they'll get kids. He says, nah, I don't believe in this stuff. This travel agent wanted him very much to go. He had a shakas to chazidus. So it became like an issue. So he says, you know what? What happens if I pay? If I'll pay, I'll pay for your trip. If you pay for my trip, I'll go. He says, but if I'm paying for your trip, then I get two tzchusim. I get to choose to, I get to be sandik, and I get to uh, choose his name. So he agreed, he had no children. But what does he believe? Anyway, he went to the scene of Melech Melechens, and his wife became pregnant. And the guy came back to him and said, business is business. I'm the Sandik, no problem. But I'm choosing him. He said, absolutely not. I have to choose a Tzioni name, a modern name. He says, oh, 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 this was the deal. Anyway, they had a little boy, and it became war. The guy said, I'm naming him Eli Melech, Eli Melech. It's three syllables too many for an Israeli. Um... And his wife said, Bishaf of my dead body. He said, listen, I, this was the deal. I pay for the trip. I choose the name. So the whole week before the bris, there's this uncomfortable situation. So he said, you know what? We're going to name Mela Melech, and then you can give him a second name. And you can use the second name. You'll use him by the second name, make an Israeli name. So you know what name she chose for her son? Noyam. The Sefer of the Melech Melech is called Noyam Mela Melech. Talk about that. She called him, she liked Noyam. Noyam and the Melech. The Rebbe Sefer, the Melech Sefer is the name of the Melech. Okay, Rabbi let's go through our learning. Let's go through our learning. Rabbi Yisai, Moira and Rabbi We're learning the, the Sulam, the ladder of Davening. We did Meida Ani, we did Tzuki de Zimra, we were little Bechaz Kishma, holding Kishma. What we learned about Kishma is that it's quote, Bittal Daha Saga, there was only Bittal Ayesh. I gave you a shia last week on Wednesday where I talked to you about the idea of Mesiris Nefesh. And then I interrupted. I started to give lectures. Part of the reason it's taking so long is because I keep interrupting the, the Maimit to talk about other things. And I gave you a shia. The shia of Thursday last was in the first two Pashas of Kishma. Shema and Vahoyim Shamaya. Now, if, if you remember last week, I had you bring in a Siddur, right? If you will get Siddurim now, we'll just make it a little easier. That's the Aptarov. That's the Aptarov. That's the next generation. The Abdarav was a Talmud of his. Yeah, the Melech. He was the Rebbe from, he was called the Rebbe of all the Polish. The, 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 the Rebbe of all the Rebbe from Polish. Okay, so Rabbi Isai, if you have a regular, only Hebrew Siddur, Achman al it's on page 46. What did I say is the division in Kriya Shema. The reason I put the words did I say is I want you to understand that this is 
it's it's I, it's not Torah Semis. It's how I it's how I it's how I think when I, when I say Kriyshma, this is my kavana. Um, I don't know if it's right or if it's wrong, but this is what I do with. I say that first Pasha Krishna ends after the word Vesabata, meaning you go Vahoyam Shamaya, the first five and a half lines. Till the Achaltas Batas, the beginning of the first part of Krishna, he Shamrulacham Pen is the second part of Krishna. Now, in, in Aloha, in Mishnayis, the first Pasha Krishna is called Kabbalah Sel Machashamayim, that means accepting Hashem. And the second Pasha Krishna is called Kabbalah Sel Mitzvah, accepting Hashem's Mitzvah. So I'm explaining it to you, I'm explaining it to you, just a little bit of a tweak. Question 280 What is the first part talking about? The first part is talking about a Yid who's sensitive to spirituality, to Ruach HaKadosh and Nevoah. A person who lives in a time or in a Madrega where he experiences godliness. Or as I explained it to you in the Shi'at of Thursday last, that he's a Madrega Terasim Nasai. He learns Torah and from his Torah comes his Parnasa. If you remember the class, Tairasa Yom Nasi is the Madrega Bechol Maidacha. The Gemara's expression of Terasim Nasai is Melachtoi Nasis Ayedei Yachedim. A person's madrega to Hashem Nasi doesn't work. He learns, and the Torah is his umnas. Torah feeds him. You know, most people are fed because they have a job. It's called amal malacha. Some people are fed because they daven, and their davening is the parnasa, which is called amal siche. Very few people, habe also kerab shimin v'lay also beyadam. They have what's called amal Torah. They study the Torah, and from the Torah alone, there's mizenis, because it's Torah on a madrege that affects the gashmias. The first pasha of Krishna is talking about a Jew who's very spiritual, or in times that are very spiritual. Okay, now, how can I prove this from the sequence of the psukim? How did I prove that we're talking about a Jew who's very spiritual, and that his avodas Hashem is? Uh, Pneumistic, and therefore from his davening and learning comes Panasa. The answer is because it says first Torah, then mitzvahs, right? And then it says, And how do I explain it to you? When it says Torah before mitzvahs, Torah before mitzvahs means he's not learning how to do mitzvahs. He's learning about Hashem and Hashem Achad. When you read in the first Pasha Krishna, Shema Yisro, Adinoy Yolehenu, Adinoy Achad. And then you say, This is a person who's learning about God. He's learning about godliness. And he's learning what we call in our culture, the neshama of Torah. So we're studying Torah to understand Hashem. And from his understanding of Hashem, it spills over into his kiyam and mitzvah. And then and then the beginning of the second passage is, Then Hashem gives you panasa. And the way I'm explaining it to you, Vestach, Metar Atzachem, Yaire, Malkaish, Diganecha, Tireshcha, Yitzarecha, he says, You give your animal to eat, Venasati Ese, Besadach, Levantecha, you give grass to your nefesh, Abahamis, Vachalta, you eat Vesavata, and your nefesh will kiss is satisfied. This is the Madrek of Abba Tanugim. There's a rule in Chasidis that the nefesh will kiss is never satisfied. Nefesh Abahamis is called Rava, Nefesh Abahamis is called Sameya, always thirsty. Unless you're holding in the Madrek of Abba Tanugim, that's what we're talking about. The first Pasha of Krishna, which in my, I can't say opinion, I'm not entitled to one, in my feel, goes to this Avata as a Yid whose avoidance Hashem is Pnimi. Of course he does mitzvahs. Of course he does mitzvahs. But his Yiddishkeit is based on a spiritual involvement with Hashem. And when it says Vishinantam, Vishinantam means you have to learn very deeply. He's not learning how to do mitzvahs, he's learning what the Ebishter is. And he feels the Ebishter, he experiences the Ebishter that spills over into his mitzvahs. And that person, has Panasa from his Torah Avoid, from his Yiddishkeit. That's the answer to question 281. So the answer is that because it says Torah before mitzvahs, Vishinantam and then Ukshatam, so Vishinantam means he's learning about Achtas Hashem, he's learning Pnimis Torah, as opposed to learning Allah. Okay? What is the second part talking about? Golos. And Golos means the lights are out. You cannot learn about Hashem on a level that you're going to get to feel Hashem. Spirituality is missing. Ruchnius is missing. And because spirituality is missing, the only thing you can do is mitzvahs. You fall back on action, on Kabbalah sale. Okay, that's what the second part of Krishna is talking about. You cannot learn about Hashem in such a way that you can feel His Ruchnius, the Kesens, right? The light is missing. It's called Hashem, turn the light off. I mean, the, 
the biggest, biggest, biggest Yidin don't have such limitations, but for the average you, Yid, it's not Shaykhis that they should have a Yiddishkeit where they learn about Hashem and develop a spiritual sense of Him, and therefore the Yiddishkeit comes from spirituality to action. So all they can do is mitzvahs. Now, question. 282, the second 282, I have the same number twice, I'll have to fix it. How can you prove this from the sequence of the Psukim? The answer is because over here you have mitzvahs before data. First it says, Akshartam lo'aisam lo'aisa yedechem, tefillin goes on all the mitzvahs, and then it says, Vili madetem. So mitzvahs of Atayda means, I cannot come to Hashem from spirituality to action, I can only do mitzvahs. And when it says, Vili madetem, it doesn't mean to learn Kabbalah, it means to learn how to do mitzvahs. So the Torah of Eshinantam, in the first parsha, and the Torah of Vili madetem, the second parsha, two different Torahs. In the first parsha of Eshinantam means to learn Chesidus, learn about Achas Hashem, learn about Hashem Echad. In the second part of the mother, that means learn about akshatam. Because when a yid is not in a situation, and a yid is not in a state of sufficient sensitivity for all kinds of reasons, some are not his fault, some are our his fault, but it doesn't really matter. Where he can have a spirituality of Yiddish guy then spills over into action. How do yidin survive when life is tough? They do what Hashem said. Mitzvahs, Kabbalah sale. That's the difference between the first Pasha Krishna, which finishes with the word Vesavata, which is six lines into Vayim Shamaya, and Yishamru Lechem Pen. Okay? Next, you ready? Yasef Ruben, you ready? Uh, Ruben Yasef. Ruben Yasef. Yasef Ruben is at the increase in seeing, right? <laughs> Ruben Yasef means to see the increase. Okay, everything is Bashgacha. Now, question 200. In 82, I told you. How do you see it from the sequence of the Psukim? Because first it says Ukshartam, which means mitzvahs, and then it says Vilimadatem. 283. How did I explain to you the word Yisham Lechem Pen? The word pen in English means lest, L E S T, but we don't have the English here, so we have just plain Hebrew. Pen is from the word ponim. You have sometimes in Tanakh that the word face is pen. Pen is nun, the word ponim. Now, what do we know about a ponim? What do we know about a face? We know two things about a face. If you're sensitive, you look at a person's face, you know everything. If you're not sensitive, you look at a person's face and you see nothing. Be a weary pen. You look at the Abishna's face and you won't see. Hashem shows himself to you, you see his face. But seeing Hashem's face could either be seeing everything or it could either be like a mask which doesn't see anything. And therefore, you don't see. You see, you're looking directly at the Ebishter, but you don't see. To use fancy words, you're seeing atzmos rather than giluyim. And because you're seeing atzmos rather than giluyim, if you're not sensitive to it, you see nothing. That's why in Purim we wear masks, right? You're looking at the face of Hashem and you're seeing nothing. And as the Pasuk says, right, what does the Gemara say? What's the source of Esther in the Torah? V'anoichi haster, aster, what's the next word? Panai v'yeimahu. Not I hide my face. You see Hashem's face and you see nothing. How do you get sensitive to Hashem? <laughs> the answer to that question is humility. Not to try. It's the hardest thing. To get to Giluyim, to something which is an experience, y- you feel it with your receptors. You feel it with your sensitivity. Atmos, the only way to get to Atmos is by, by not trying. The example of sensitivity to Atmos is Maidani. Simple. And yeah, it, it, that requires a lot of humility and it requires a lot of passivity, a lot of bittle. And if you don't have that, if you want to feel and you want to understand, you feel, you feel locked out, you feel blocked. That's the word. Golos, you see, you're in his face. And if you're Zoyche, it's even hard. And if you're not Zoyche, you see nothing. And then you make mistakes. You start to think that you have to try different tricks. And that's the Elakim HaChedim. Elakim HaChedim doesn't mean other gods. Elakim HaChedim means Hashem with his back turned. That's all Hasidus teaches it. Okay? Now, one more question. 284. According to the above, according to the above, based on how I divided up Kirishma, right? Again, in Lashon HaMisha, the first portion is Kabbalah, so you're accepting Hashem. Obviously, if you're going to accept Hashem, you're going to do his mitzvahs. But there are byproducts of accepting Hashem. The second pasha of Krishna is called Kabbalah Sel Mitzvahs. You can't accept Hashem because you're not sensitive to Him. You just do His Mitzvahs. My contribution to this is that the first pasha finishes with the word Vesavata. Not here, but here, in Kavona. Okay, now, 
According to the above, explain the Pasuk Laman Yirba Yemechem and why do some Sidurim have this one Pasuk in a separate paragraph? By us, Laman is part of Hayyim Shamay. In many Sidurim, in older Sidurim, they used to make Laman into a separate paragraph. Rabbi Levi Raskin, Zalzan Gezunt, the dying Raskin of London who made the Al Tadeb Siddur with notes, wonders why Laman is in a separate Pasuk. He asks the question, why in many Sadudan they print Laman and said, Pasuk, it's a part of Ishmael. I gave you a simple tenet. I made it up. It's all made up. It's all conjecture. Because Laman isn't going on Vahim it's going on both. If a Yid knows that sometimes you should have a relationship with Avish, like the first Pasha of Kirishma, and at other times where you're not able to have a relationship with the first Pasha of Kishma, you shift to the relationship of Seth Pasha Kishma, then you have a Rechis Laman, in order, Yirbi Yamechim, how did you survive? Do survive that when the Abish is revealed, they tap into the Abish to that way. Where is it going on? So on both, on Shema and Vayim In order to live long, you have to be flexible. That when the Abish reveals himself to you, you approach him like the first Pasha of Krishna indicates. Where Vishinantam Levanacha means you're learning about him, Akhtas Hashem, and then the mitzvahs are a byproduct. And then you shovel the pen when the Ibish has a mask, you're looking at his face and you're not able to see. So you resort to what? Ukshartem Samtem. This Pasak is so important. Visamtem is the Vare Ayla. Put these words on your heart. When your heart's on your soul, Ukshartem Oisim. What do those words mean? Something means? That when Hashem hides, don't forget this. Do mitzvahs. Visamtem is the Vare. Place these words. Alavavacham on your heart. Ukshartem. When you when you feel far from Hashem, do the mitzvahs. That'll keep you. Do the mitzvahs. That's the pshat in this pasuk. So Laman Yirbu goes on both pashas. That's why it's in a separate paragraph in some sedurim. Laman Yirbu is saying that if a person knows that when Hashem is more revealed, you approach Him from an angle of spirituality. And from that comes Kiyam and mitzvahs. And when Hashem is more concealed, you just remember you've got to do what Hashem said. And from that comes Kiyam Ka Yisrael. That's how we have Arichas Yom. That's how, that's, how, that's how I touched it. That's how I explained to you the first two pashas of Kiddush. Okay? Does anybody have any questions or comments? I mean it. Does anybody have any questions or comments? I have time. Hop tight. The first part is talking about a Yid who lives in a time where he's in a Madrege where he's connected to, to spirituality. So when it says Shema Yisrael, a person has to think about Akhtar Hashem. When he's studying Taita, he's not studying Taita about Halacha. He's studying about the Ebishter. We're talking about a spiritual Jew whose kiyom ha mitzvahs, like in time of the first base of Mikdash, his fulfillment of mitzvahs comes from his nevu and his rocha kedesh. So the focus is on spirituality. And such a person, he's in the madrega b'chol maidecha. So at the beginning of the second parasha, it says, uh, you have the goncha, the melachte, nasa idea chedem. You learn, and from your taita of avoy, the panasa comes automatic. Okay? Go ahead. The first parasha and by the Til v'chaltos vat. That's the end of the first part. That's right. Because that's correct. And what I said is nonsense. But I happen to be the teacher, so you're stuck listening to this nonsense. Now, I really don't think I'm making it up. I really think I saw it. But I don't remember where. You understand? I, I, I'm not that smart. If, I, if something sounds good that comes out of my mouth, it says... I think it says even Exodus. And then from Hishamru to Allah Aretz, and then Mayimra. No, Hishamru until Uvisharecha. That's Managolas. And Laman is going on both. And then Laman till the end? No, no, till Allah Aretz. And today's Shir is on Vayimra. I'm going through Krishna. Today's Shir is on Vayimra. Shema is a four part. Well, if you're making Laman into a separate part, then. Mm-hmm. Okay, Rabbi said, now we're doing Vayimra. Seriously, questions that come. I have time for this. Rabbi Seva Yoimer teaches a very powerful message which has many, many examples. Any time you do anything religious, it needs to have an edge. That's what it teaches you. Okay, and I'm going to start from the Rambam. Right? The Rambam holds that having payas on your head, which is basically the titus of your hair, just like the titus of your begid, is the opposite of Avedizara of idol worship. Because the idol worshippers, the koimrim, I don't know what the word is, the, uh, the abbots, I don't know the, all the words in the Christian language, used to dafke shave their head like this in a circle. 
and it's called leitakifu. Leitakifu pa'as reshchem. You're not allowed to make your head round, because making the head round like this was the derech of the kaim of David Avi Dezara, and you have to dafke leva over peyes reish. So the Rambam says that leitakifu, not making your head round, is against Avi Dezara. And the Indian of Baltashka that you're not allowed to destroy pa'as reishcha and pa'as konecha is speaking to the opposite of Avedah Zorah. Why? Because Avedah Zorah, Rabbi Isai, has a simple rule. Right? It's the same old story in every case, in every context. Avedah Zorah believes in a gartel. Now, we also believe in a gartel, but it's a different kind of gartel. You know the old joke, where, where do you, what's the separation of the top and the bottom of a person? Some people have it here, some people have it here, some people have it here, and some people have it here. <laughs> right? There's a higher person and a lower person. The higher person belongs to God, the lower person is a behemoth. That's what Avaidazar is division, separation. Now we also make a gartel. But the gartel is for tzniyas, but not chas vashon that is two deshuyas. So the, the, spirit, the shita of the koimrim was that relationship with Hashem is only spiritual. They didn't believe in mitzvahs. And the symbol of this was to shave their head round, not to leave payas. Because the payas, which is the edge of the head, represents when I learn something and I understand something and I feel something, I need to do something about it. And in those religions, and the way it plays out today in Christianity, Kibshute, the Rambam says it, the says, I wouldn't say these words otherwise. Bittel mitzvahs is cutting off the payas. What's religion? Meditation, spirituality, prayer, uh, sensitivity. And, and the whole Chiddush of Yiddishkeit is you have a head full of knowledge, you have to have a pay at the end of the head. The pay at the end of that means you've got to translate that into an action. The Rambam. I mean, the Rambam doesn't explain it this way. This, the word the Rambam simply says that the Takif is a The Havana, this Pashat Pshat. It's Pashat Pshat. And we have a thousand examples for this. Koyrach, what's Koyrach's story? Koyrach come to Meshach Rabbeinu and he says, Bayis Malay Svarim needs a mezuzah. A room full of Sifrit Haider. You need a mezuzah. What's a mezuzah? A mezuzah is a payer of a room full of Sifrit Haider. Put up a mezuzah. Why? It's so much tighter when you're a mezuzah. The answer is if the spirituality you have doesn't translate into an action, it's a vidzada. Kairach had two questions. Same question twice. The first question is a room full of Sefer Ted needs a mezuzah. And the second question was what? Talas, Shekula, Tcheles. Chayevet betzitzis, Eptunim and atzitzis. You have a number of examples in Yiddishkeit. You have the mezuzah on the door, the pay at the end of a beg of the dal compass, the mitzvah of pay in a field. Right? There's a mitzvah, it's say, the, the second tractate in Shas after Brachis is called Peya. It deals with the idea that when you harvest a field, you leave over an edge for the poor people. A Peya. This is called a Peya. That's called a Peya. Titus is a Peya and the Mezuzah is a Peya. All over Yiddishkeit, you see this pattern. You have to have an edge. But it's not pretty. It's not pretty. Make it nice and round. What's the answer? It doesn't have to be pretty, it has to be real. And it's not real until it costs. And the cost is the action. And that's tzitzis. We follow up Kirishma with tzitzis. For two reasons. For two reasons. And the first reason is tzitzis. Meaning, Shema Yisrael is a meditation. Shema Yisrael is a meditation. I'm thinking about the witness of Hashem. Now, the way I'm explaining it to you, and my explanation is correct, but close. Even if I'm making up some of the details about the title of the word pen, um, that there's two circumstances of Yiddishkeit. There's a circumstance of Yiddishkeit which is very spiritual. And there's a circumstance of Yiddishkeit which is very practical, very actionable. Both those Jews have to say, And then, And then, you're the most spiritual person in the world. You have to do mitzvahs. If you're this Jew, if you're studying Aks Hashem, you're incredibly spiritual. You know the whole Kabbalah backwards and forwards. You have to put on a Dalad Kamfis with tzitzis. You got to do mitzvahs. And if you don't do mitzvahs, it's a It's tef, no good. So tzitzis, 
means you have a beged, a garment. The garment represents spirituality. It must have an edge. And you'll see this is the uniqueness of Yiddishkeit. This is what makes Yiddishkeit so unique. Right? Or to say it in fancy words, right? My grandfather he said this to me all the time. One of the greatest miracles in Jewish history is Tedesh Balpeh. Last week's Chitas, Yashabes is Chitas. The fact, the Gemara speaks about it, the fact that the Tedesh Balpeh was not written down as the Tanakh was, everybody said, our Bible belongs to the whole world. How come Gemara doesn't? Because it came 1500 years later. I know, but they don't believe in it. Every Shabbos we say a prayer. And I think that this prayer is not only said about Shabbos, it's said about the whole Teish Vapev. Hashem didn't give Shabbos to Goyim. He didn't give it to Goyim. Now here's, what's the chap? How many times in the Chumash is Shabbos mentioned? A couple? I think it's, it's, it's many times. It's either 32 or 40 times. It's an enormous number of times Shabbos is mentioned. But you can learn all the psukim and the Torah about Shabbos and you'll have that, you will not have the slightest idea how you're supposed to keep it. Why? Keep Shabbos, keep Shabbos, keep Shabbos, keep Shabbos. What am I supposed to do? It does say not work. Huh? It say but not it doesn't work. define work. You don't know how to keep Shabbos unless you learn the Gemara. Lamed test malachas nitnu b'Shabbos. Nehmer, whatever it is. Ha'chedesh, v'azereya, v'habeder. A person studies just Torah Shabbat Shabbos has no clue what's the Malachah and Shabbos. They don't know. Why? Because Shabbos was given to us. Or more broadly, mitzvahs were given to us. Goyim lahadl took our religion. But they didn't take the mitzvahs. Meaning to say, they have hair on the head, no payas. Full of knowledge, no action. They have a room full of potatoes, no mezuzah. And Yiddishkeit is defined by this. By action, it was given to us. And we say every Shabbos, and again, I don't think it's only about Shabbos. I think it's about the whole Yiddish guy. The fact that our tradition of action was oral for 1500 years, for a very, very long time, from Har Sinai to the Nasi is a very long time. Pudanasi is after Chorban Ba'isheni, and the Gemara is a few hundred years after that. It makes mitzvahs Jewish, exclusively Jewish. Because this is what's unique about a Yid. Your religion is defined by the fact that what you think and feel and believe, you act. A-C-T, you act. And who needs to hear it? The Yid who's in a big spiritual state thinks, eh, I didn't do a mitzvah, I meditated. Uh, uh, uh. Lake Tfilim, you know, don't sit and meditate. You speak, Vayoymer speaks to both Jews. It speaks to the Yid who's in the Madrega of Shema, where his whole life is spirituality. You tell him, you got to do the mitzvahs, you got to do the mitzvahs. You have to translate them into a deed. All the learning and all the knowledge and all the meditation, all the prophecy is not real unless there's a tzitzah, an edge of a beged where you do a mitzvah. And then of course to the other yid you say, you don't know what to do with the beged. Your beged does not, uh, it's not, it doesn't have a din of tashmishe kedusha, tashmishe mitzvah, yeah? But at least you have a tzitzah. A yidin goes, you, 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 you have an edge. You have a mitzvah, that's what makes us Jews. And every day we say tzitzis for this reason. Meaning, if Shema Yisrael is in fact the prayer or the, or the uh, rhetoric that we say that defines our relationship with Hashem and it defines that relationship in two basic conditions. Emphasis on the word basic, even though I don't like that word. A, when you're in a very high spiritual state. B, when you're in a very ordinary spiritual state. You say to both of those people, do a mitzvah. Do a mitzvah. Go ahead. Uh, so, um, said, uh, like, uh, the classic was on the Madrego, which were also not the potter for mitzvah for mitzvah. No, I put it from tefillah. Oh, that's B. I, I did say it. So, then, that, so the, the, the pshat is that you have to have a shayv. What is wrong? What is wrong with the takif? What's wrong with cutting off the payas? God is nights and weekends, and the rest of the week I'm a pig. I mean, look at these religions. I mean, let's speak in the language. Right? What's the center of the Jewish religion? The Christian religion is the church. It's the temple. It's the, the center of the Jewish religion is the home. They don't believe you. You know, when the reformer, the conservative scream that we put on women because they can't say a chazan. 
the Jewish temple is not the shul, it's the place where the men go so the women can do what they need to do. The Jewish temple is the home. Why? Because it's about children, and it's about mitzvahs, and it's about having children, it's about raising children. That whole koch creates a unity between heaven and earth. Religion is not something I do, it's my whole life. It's my whole life cause of the actions. You're not always in the mood. You go to shul, you get very inspired. You're not always in the mood, but you always do mitzvahs. If you take that away, religion and your regular life are separate. They're two different things. I go to when I'm in the mood. I go to when, I'm, when I need God to answer me because I'm angry at him because he did this, that, and the other thing. But my regular life is totally separate from it. Right? This, this insight is what we're saying every day in Krishna. You don't just think about the Abishtad. You think about the Abishtad and then no matter how holy and spiritual you are, you do a mitzvah. No matter how unholy and how unspiritual you are, you can still do the mitzvah. And that's Vayoyme. That's the first theme of Vayoyme Tzitzis. I have the edge. I don't have the whole baggage. I'm wearing it. I don't know what to do with it. I don't feel it. But I have the edge. I have a string of a mitzvah. That's, that's the secret of Yiddishkeit. That's really one of the serious reasons for Jewish survival. How many Yidden were there who were great Samaratim, but you to mention, but they had, my father did it, I do it, don't ask me questions. In America, today there are probably tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of Jews who are from, because that Azayd and Elta Zayd who never learned in the yeshiva, never, not a minute. But he knew Azayd fit Mizach, that's it. This is the custom, this is what you do. My grandfather used to joke, my grandfather was an American Jew, my grandfather was born in 1918. He knew a year he used to pask in halachas from Medrash. <laughs> the guy was a damn artist. He didn't know a tzuna salaf. He, he knew what says in Medrash. Why? He studied Medrash. Medrash was easy. And if the Medrash told him that your, your tits are supposed to be purple, they're purple. They said to Medrash, go talk to him. But not only, he stayed from, his grandchildren stayed from because he's paskin halachas from Medrash. You understand? And the key is the maise. The key is the maise. The tragedy of American Jews is Shabbos. We all know. What does that mean? They didn't keep Shabbos. They didn't make Kiddush. Should they make Kiddush? Did they make Avdol? They didn't have a Shabbos meal with uh, matzo balls? Of course they did. But they went to work. The, the, they lost the Velayna Satesh Amalakein Al Goya Aratzis. It was a big Nesayan. We shouldn't be tested. We should never be tested. Al to Vien Lidein Nesayan. But that was the test. Now, that's the first part of Krishna. That's the first part of Titus. And then there's the second part. The second part is very important because A, it explains why women say it, who are part of from tzitzis. See, women, they should trust. Women don't have to win tzitzis. They says that they're by nature down to earth. The men are up in the clouds or in the sewer, but they can't bring the two together. The second theme, and so, so we say vayoymer, women say vayoymer, and we also say vayoymer at night when Laila loves man tzitzis, api alocha, the night is not a time for tzitzis because you cannot see them. With the second reason we're saying vayoymer is because of its time. It's very important. That the Mishnah says, Laman tiskes yeim teischam erev saim kol yemei chayecha. It's one of the sheish zechires, right? Nu yemei chayecha hayomim kol yemei chayecha haleilis yemei chayecha elam azeh kol yemei chayecha lahavi lemeisa mishiach. We say Kiddushba by day and by night. We mention it by day and by night. And that's why we say Vayoyimer. So the word is very Yisaitizdik. It's, you guys are young. So I, I understand that this is hard for you to understand, but you're going to have to believe me when I tell you that I relate to this, not on a spiritual level, but on a poshat on a human level. If you want to be free, be a servant of God. You want to be a slave, do whatever you want. It's oxymoronic. It's ironic. It's backwards. You want to be free? Serve God. You want to be a slave? Do whatever you want. How does that make sense? What happens to people do whatever they want? <laughs> they, they become slaves of their desires. If I can do whatever I want, I can indulge in any pleasure. Don't tell me what to do. Minig America. Halicha said absolute America. Do not tell me what to do. That doesn't only have anything to do with Judaism. Of course it does. Because Judaism teaches you how to serve God. You can't make up your own version. You can't make up your own version. People have tried for 3,000 years. You can serve God and be addicted to drugs. Then you're not serving Him. Then you're not serving Him. When you, a person who lives his life 
on the adage of I, I am an honest man, I don't steal from anybody, I work for my living, I do whatever I want, becomes a slave to his vices, to a greater extent, to a lesser extent. When a person accepts Hashem, which means he accepts responsibility, he accepts limits, he accepts discipline, that's where freedom is. A free person is not someone who can eat any meat or drink any wine or drive any car or indulge in any pleasure. A free person is somebody who possesses himself. This is my quotable quote. Okay, I own this. OC. The definition of freedom is, is the ability to tell yourself to do something or the ability to tell yourself not to do something and listen 100% of the time. I will say this again, but this time it's for points. The definition of freedom is a person who can tell himself to do something or tell himself not to control himself and listen 100% of the time. How many times do we know something is wrong and we don't want to do it and we do it anyway because we're slaves? Free means that what I want to do, I do. Free means when I don't want to do something, I don't do something. There's no way to have freedom unless you serve God. So Krishna finishes with Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim is not only a historic event, it's an everyday situation. Mitzrayim means containment. Mitzrayim means slavery. Mitzrayim means a lack of self control. Mitzrayim means, right, we, we live in a society which is so rich. And so many people, including some of us, are slaves to so many things. The opportunities are available, the indulgences are available, the lusts are available, and in many places they're even allowed, and they destroy us. We, I don't want to talk about drugs, I'm just, it, push, it takes away our brain, it takes away our acronym, it takes away our crispness and our sharpness and our robustness. We all wish we were always sharp and alive and free, but the answer to that is don't overeat. Don't oversleep. Don't overindulge. Control yourself. So the Mishnah says you will not have that by yourself. It's not going to happen. When you, when you make yourself a slave of a Kaddish Baruch Hu, and make yourself a Kaddish Baruch Hu is Hisham Lechem Pen, and the most important thing is Tzitzis. You got to do what the Mishnah said even when you're not in the mood. You keep Shabbos even when you want to go on your phone. You put on Tefillin even though today you're not in the right frame of mind. That makes us slaves of Him. And that's where our freedom lies. This is, this is not only religiously true, it's not a brainwashing truth. It's a real, legitimate, psychological, simple, and practical truth. This is Shema This is Krishna. This is Krishna. There's two kinds of Yiddishkeits. There's a Yiddishkeit which is based on spirituality and also comes down into action. There's a Yiddishkeit where the spirituality is missing and the focus is entirely on action. Laman Yirba Yamecha means we survive by being able to flex, be flexible. Everybody, the holiest of the holy and the simplest of the simple has to have tzitzis. You have to do mitzvahs actionably and practically. And in serving Hashem, we are free. In serving Hashem, we are free. Shem Shana Giba, speak. What if your natural desire is like serve God? So the, 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 the vart is that when you serve God based on your own understanding, that's not serving him. But when he tells you to do something and you listen, even if you agree, right? The Rebbe has a sikha. I spoke about this yesterday to the girls, the Bishrifka. The first 75 years of Ram Avinu's life are not recorded in the Chumash. But the first 70 years of Ram's life are the hardest. They're the most tumultuous. That's when Avram was doing his search. That's when Avram was fighting with the whole world. That's when Avram was almost killed. How come none of that's in the Chumash? It's such an important part of the story. So the Rebbe says the first 75 years of Ramadan's life are amazing in a thousand ways, except for one. Hashem never told him lach lacha. Hashem never said, do this. My father told me, my father told me a story that one year, some chastei, the Rebbe turned to Motel Talashevsky. He was a few years older than the Rebbe, but he was in his 80s at the time. And the Rebbe said, make a kula, to somersault. So he said to the Rebbe, farvos. Why? So the Rebbe said, valiches, because I told you. Judaism is valiches. The first seven of years of Ramadan's life are incredibly important. But until Hashem said lech lecha, he wasn't a Jew. Because a Jew means God says and we listen. And so long as the Yiddishkeit is defined by our own personal self-interest, we're missing the lech lecha. But it's true, Shimshin. I'm looking at you, I'm pushing, seeing your father. Um, 
that if Hashem gave us a mitzvah and you agree with the mitzvah, the minute he tells you to do it, it becomes harder to do. Because he said, and then it becomes my Zayda al Hashem, it's all Neville, my elder Zayda, my father's grandfather, used to sit the whole Thursday night. I came to Lukashlav and he didn't sleep Thursday night. Then one day the Rebbe Rashab told him that he should stay up Thursday night. He was doing it already. As soon as the Rebbe Rashab told him to do it, it was impossible to stay awake. <laughs> it was torture. It became a mitzvah of the Eze. It became hard. L'chaim v'lebracha. Thank you.